That morning, Megan woke up earlier than usual and went to the bathroom, rejoicing in the first rays of the sun. Despite the fact that the woman had a day off today, she didn't even think about resting and decided to run some errands. First, Megan went to get her hair done. And then she planned to do some grocery shopping. Megan loved Sundays because it was the only day of the week that she could take a break from work and relax a little bit. And the woman had to work a lot because three months ago, her father was diagnosed with a hereditary disease which required very expensive treatment. Megan loved her father very much and took great care of him. After drinking a cup of coffee, the woman quickly got ready and went outside. Despite the good weather, it was still rather cold, so Megan wrapped herself in her old jacket and hurried to the nearest bus stop. Since it was spring and the air still hadn't warmed up after the long winter, the woman's cheeks instantly turned scarlet. Fortunately, she didn't have to wait long, and a couple of minutes later, Megan already took a window seat on the warm bus. Having gotten downtown from the suburbs where she lived, the young woman started implementing her plans. Having done her hair in the beauty salon, Megan bought all the groceries she had on her shopping list. It was almost noon, but it was still cold outside. Deciding to warm up, Megan went to the nearest cafe for a cup of tea or coffee. To her surprise, the cafe turned out to be extremely crowded. The woman looked around the room and, seeing a free table in the corner, went to take a seat. The cafe was warm and cozy, which noticeably improved Megan's mood. Taking a sip of the hot drink, the woman smiled, glad that she was finally able to get a few things off her to-do list. At that moment, the cafe door opened and a man stepped in. His appearance caused bewilderment among other customers and the administrator. It was a man in his mid-twenties, dressed in a frayed jacket, jeans with patches on the knees, and battered sneakers that were tied with twine to prevent them from falling apart. The expression on the administrator's face made it perfectly clear that the homeless man wasn't welcome at that establishment. On top of that, there were no free tables, and of course, no one wanted to spend time in the company of the homeless man. It was evident that the man was very cold, and like most of the customers, wanted to treat himself to a cup of hot coffee. The stranger was about to leave when Megan waved her hand at him invitingly. The man's lips twitched, and in a second, a sweet smile appeared on his face. The other customers looked at Megan with obvious disapproval as if she had done something very bad. Meanwhile, the man made his way over to Megan's table, maneuvering in between customers, and sat down in a chair with obvious relief. Thank you, ma'am. You really helped me out. I was getting completely desperate, the homeless man said emotionally. Don't worry about it. I didn't do anything special. I'm Megan, by the way, the woman answered with a smile. The man's face brightened instantly, as if Megan's words had changed his life for the better somehow. My name is Spencer, although I can't be sure if that's really so, the man said embarrassedly. Megan's surprise knew no bounds. How do you not know your own name? If you only knew how tired I am of such a life, I don't know who I am and what are the names of my parents. You see, a year ago, I woke up in a roadside ditch with an injured head. Other homeless people helped me out. They even named me. But I don't remember anything from my former life. The homeless man whispered, having a hard time holding back his tears. Megan shook her head sadly in response. She couldn't help but feel sorry for the man who found himself in such a difficult situation. Unwilling to delve deeper into the uncomfortable topic, Spencer sighed sadly and reached into his pocket for change in order to get himself a cup of coffee. But Megan grabbed his hand and shook her head. No need, it's my treat. Soon, the waitress brought Spencer coffee and he relaxed visibly. Despite having met under such unusual circumstances, he couldn't help but notice how beautiful the woman sitting next to him was. Without even realizing it, the young people started talking and felt a barely perceptible mutual sympathy towards each other. Instead of several minutes, Megan and Spencer spent an hour talking. 
and if it weren't for the waitress who brought the check, they would have sat there until the evening. Seeing that the woman intended to pay for everything herself, Spencer stepped aside and asked the waitress for a pen or pencil. Taking the pen, Spencer quickly wrote something on a napkin and folded it several times, after which he handed it over to Megan. Take it, but read it only after I leave, please, the homeless man said, barely managing to keep his emotions in check. Megan wanted to stop the man, but he was already at the exit. It wasn't until Spencer was out the door that the woman unfolded the napkin with his message written in neat handwriting. Having read the text, Megan covered her face with her hands and couldn't hold back her tears. Only when she calmed down a bit did she realize the true meaning of what was written. Spencer's message said, Thank you for being kind to me. A cup of coffee and a little kindness made a real miracle happen today. Your attitude saved me from death. After all, if it weren't for you, I would have committed suicide today. Thank you for everything. Please be happy. Yours truly, Spencer. Wiping her eyes with the handkerchief, Megan put the napkin into her pocket and left the cafe. Of course, Spencer was no longer there. Having checked the street, Megan headed home. The woman couldn't stop thinking about Spencer and how cruel life must have been to him. Why did he leave and didn't wait for me outside? And why didn't I stop him? Megan reproached herself. As she turned onto the street, she saw a tiny puppy whimpering by the trash cans. The poor fellow was very hungry and shivering from the cold. The puppy looked at the woman with his sad eyes and made everything inside her tremble with pity for the homeless creature. Megan bent over to the puppy and picked him up. How did you end up here, you poor thing? The woman asked, holding the puppy. Of course, if the puppy could answer her, he would have certainly done so. In the meantime, all he could do was lick Megan's cheek and hide in the folds of her jacket. Well, that's enough. Stop it. I'm ticklish. The woman objected lovingly. Thus, a new tenant appeared in Megan's house, whom she named Buddy. The puppy was restless. He kept running around, playing and chewing on everything he could reach, causing his mistress a lot of trouble. But when the dog grew up a little, Megan took up his training. Thus, Buddy turned into an exemplary, very well-behaved pet over time. Now that a dog had appeared in the woman's life, she got even more responsibilities. At the same time, not a single day passed without Megan thinking about Spencer, whose words sunk deep into her soul. Most of all, Buddy loved walking in the park, where he could chase squirrels, trying to grab them by their fluffy tails. One day, as if they were returning from their walk, Megan decided to stop by a deli in order to buy a treat for her pet. The deli's owner was already used to the strange couple, and therefore always kept a couple of fresh bones for them. Megan was a few steps away from the deli when an SUV pulled up to it and a well-dressed man got out. Taking a closer look, Megan couldn't contain her emotions. That's impossible. The woman's surprise was perfectly justified since the man from the SUV turned out to be the homeless Spencer. Megan was sure it was him. At that moment, Spencer turned around and saw the pretty woman with the dog. Megan, I'm so happy to see you, the man said, not even trying to hide his joy. Buddy growled menacingly, unsure if Spencer was a friend or a foe. What are you doing here? And why do you look like this? Megan asked, surprised. She wanted to say something else, but the man hugged her and covered her mouth with a kiss. As it turned out, Spencer was the son of a wealthy landowner with millions in the bank. A year ago, he was kidnapped for ransom. Unfortunately, Spencer's father's inherent pride and stubbornness prevented him from paying the kidnappers. Thus, because of the businessman's convictions, the kidnappers couldn't think of anything better than to beat the man to a pulp and throw him into a roadside ditch. However, despite everything that happened to him, Spencer survived, although he did partially lose his memory. In fact, his name wasn't actually Spencer, it was Josh, but it didn't really matter to Megan. 
After listening to the man's story, she smiled for the first time in weeks and gave him a long hug. You know, I realized a lot during this time. What you did for me in that cafe, it literally turned my life upside down. After our encounter at the cafe, I walked down the street until a man pulled me by the hand. It was my father's business manager. He recognized me and took me to his place. Then there was treatment and rehabilitation focused on memory recovery. And all this time, all I could think about was you. You may not believe me, but I swore that if I find you, I will ask you to marry me. So, what do you say? Josh asked, having a hard time holding back his tears. To say that Megan was surprised and shocked would be a great understatement. The woman never expected to be proposed to, especially right there on the street. It was all happening so fast that it seemed like some kind of a dream. Yes, honey, I will marry you. Megan replied softly. As if to confirm her words, Buddy barked softly and wagged his tail. Taking Megan by the hand, the young millionaire put her into his SUV, not forgetting about her loyal dog. Now, the young people were heading into a happy life together, full of big and small joys, which strong and friendly families are known for. Later, Megan and Josh moved to Ohio, where they bought a big house near a lake and a forest. The young businessman also bought two rundown farms there. After major reconstruction and solid investments, they turned into a successful agricultural business for the man. Soon, his farmlands began to give the young family a tangible income, which allowed them to buy a house nearby for Megan's father and pay for his treatment and rehabilitation. The young people held a magnificent wedding. And a year later, Megan gave birth to a charming baby, who immediately filled their new home with joy and laughter.